Hi everyone. Let's start by imagining you're the attending physician at a local hospital. When an ambulance brings a seven-year-old boy after his teacher found him having difficulty breathing at the school playground. The caretaker arrives at the ED at the same time as the patient. She tells you his son has asthma and that he used albuterol during exacerbation. When examining the patient, you hear a laborious breathing sound, and during auscultation, you hear. <coughs> 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 As we learn in the long sound video, these are typical wheezing sounds during an asthma exacerbation. During this video, we will discuss the first-line treatment options for this patient. First, make sure the patient doesn't have any sign of imminent respiratory failure, such as low oxygen saturation or altered mental status. First-line treatment options for an asthma exacerbation include bronchodilators such as albuterol and apotropium and anti-inflammatories such as corticosteroids. Albuterol is a short-acting beta-2 receptor agonist. It causes smooth muscle relaxation and airway dilatation. It can be used in a meter dose inhaler or in a nebulizer. During an asthma exacerbation, up to three doses every 20 minutes can be administered. Remember, albuterol is a rescue therapy and should not be used chronically. Epotropium, on the other hand, is a short muscarine antagonist that works by preventing bronchoconstriction. Epotropium can be used in addition of a short-acting beta-2 receptor agonist during a moderate or severe asthma exacerbation. Just as albuterol, Epitropion can be administered up to three times every 20 to 30 minutes with an inhaler or nebulizer. Lastly, systemic corticosteroids are also used during acute asthma exacerbations. Systemic corticosteroids are typically administered during moderate to severe asthma exacerbations. Prednisone or prednisolone are preferably administered by mouth for a course of three to five days. Because of their side effects, systemic corticosteroids should only be administered for short periods of time. In unresponsive patients to these therapies, other agents can be used, but those are outside of the objectives for this video. Make sure to share this video, and I hope you have learned something new today. See you next time.